Next on my list is Her Excellency Retno Lestari Priyansari Marsudi, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia. You have the floor, ma'am. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mr. President, on 26 October, I had stood at this hall to attend the emergency special session where Indonesia co-sponsored the resolution on the Gaza crisis. I have flown back to New York City, back to this rostrum, because I care about justice, because I care about humanity and about Palestine. I cannot stand still to see thousands of deaths of innocent women and children. I cannot stand still to see homes, schools, and hospitals being flattened to rubbles. Can you stand still seeing of this horrific situation? On November 11, the Joint Summit of Arab League's OIC issued a strong position on the importance of unhindered humanitarian assistance, permanent ceasefire, and two-state solution. Last week, together with a number of the OIC foreign ministers, I traveled to Beijing, Moscow, London, and Paris. Those countries are permanent members of the security councils. I urge them to do more for justice and humanity for Palestine. And I will continue this effort to reach and talk to as many countries as possible. Mr. President, can I ask, is what Israel doing consistent with the international law? Is it consistent with international humanitarian law? Let us be honest to ourselves in answering this question. And if we really want to defend justice and humanity, there are four issues we should work for. First, we need a permanent ceasefire. The first extended pause in hostilities is a welcome start to end these atrocities. But these uneasy pauses will not be enough. We need a ceasefire. Without it, it will be difficult to do the rest, to save lives and for aid agencies to work in Gaza. Second, ensure unhindered humanitarian assistance. Massive humanitarian aid is needed in Gaza. We need to scale up humanitarian assistance. We must support UNRWA and other humanitarian agencies to help 1.7 million Palestinians forcibly displaced in Gaza. Indonesia is committed to scaling up assistance, including by deploying our floating hospital. Third, we must stand for justice. Even wars have rules and limits, and these are nowhere to be seen in Gaza. Attacks against hospitals schools, places of worship, refugee camps should not be normalized. I repeat, should not be normalized. We must call a spade a spade. What has taken place in Gaza are clear violation of international humanitarian law and failure to act may equal to complicity. We must also call out double standard in the application of international law, which seriously undermine the sanctity of the law itself. Indonesia therefore supports efforts to ensure accountability of Israel at various relevant forums, including the International Court of Justice. And fourth, restart the Palestine-Israel peace and political process. Mr. President, Addressing the question of Palestine requires us to address the root causes, plain and simple, the occupation 
on the Palestinian land must end. There are no military solution to this conflict. Political solution is the only answer. We need a credible negotiation process that is transparent and equitable, with Palestine and Israel having equal standing as UN full members, leading to a two-state solution based on internationally agreed parameters. Mr. President, Indonesia calls on the global community to stand together with humanity. Only by uniting can we bring peace to Palestine and the region. Only by using our heart can we bring humanity and justice. I thank you very much.